10 long generations after Adam first sinned, God gave this sad report on the human family. The wickedness of man was great on the earth, and the thoughts of his heart were only evil all the time. But one family on earth still trusted God. Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood, make rooms in it, and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. This spacious three-level barge, one and a half times the length of a football field, would have enough room to house a pair of each kind of animal and seven pairs of animals for sin offerings. The ark would have a ventilation system and one big door. For a whole century, Noah built the ark together with his wife, his three sons, and their wives. As he worked, Noah warned the world of God's coming judgment, but people just mocked him. Finally, the ark was ready. Noah's family had stocked it with supplies. God brought the animals, reptiles, insects, and birds. What a sight as they entered the ark and settled into its thousands of compartments. Noah and his family entered too. Did anyone else come into the place of safety? No. So God shut the door. Angry clouds enveloped the globe. Lightning flashed and thunder crashed. On that day, all the springs of the great deep burst forth and the floodgates of the heavens were opened and rain fell on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. It was the worst natural disaster in history. Except for eight souls sheltered in the ark, all humanity perished. A proud, unbelieving world learned the truth too late. Geological and fossil records affirm the biblical record. From the Sahara to the Himalayas, marine fossils can be unearthed in the world's great deserts and mountains. In His mercy, God is patient, but in His justice, He will judge sin. So what happened to Noah and his family and the animals in the ark? They were saved from God's judgment. God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and the livestock that were with him in the ark. And he sent a wind over the earth and the waters receded. The huge ark floated down, finally resting on Ararat, a massive double peaked mountain in eastern Turkey. Three times Noah sent out a dove to see if it could find dry ground. The first time, the dove just came back. The second time, the dove returned to Noah with an olive leaf in its beak. The third time, the dove did not return. It had found a home. Noah knew it was time to exit the ark. A whole year had passed since the flood began. Do you know the first thing Noah did after his family and the animals came out of the ark? Noah built an altar to the Lord, and taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma. God's justice and mercy had not changed. Sin still required a death payment. 
That is why Noah shed the blood of innocent creatures and burned their bodies on an altar, suspended between heaven and earth, between God and man. Such sacrifices pointed to the sinless Messiah who would one day come to earth to provide the real payment for sin. Next, God gave a command to Noah and his family. Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth. The Lord God also made a covenant with planet Earth. I have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the Earth. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. As a symbol of His covenant, God unveiled a glorious rainbow towering up into the cloudy sky. God promised that He would never again send a global flood. The rainbow reminds us that, whether to punish or to protect, God always keeps His promises. Always. Even when blessed with a fresh start, within a few generations most people had turned away from the Lord to go their own way. For example, God had commanded mankind to spread out and fill the earth. So what did man do? The scripture tells us. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As men moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar, present day Iraq, and settled there. They said to each other, come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth. Instead of praising the great name of the Lord, the builders of the city wanted people to praise them. Like Satan, they were controlled by a spirit of pride and rebellion. By wanting to build a tower that reaches to the heavens, they were like religious people today who hoped to reach heaven by their own efforts. Like Cain, these people were religious, but they ignored God's way of forgiveness and righteousness. They did not trust God and His plan. So the Lord God said, Come, let's go down and give them different languages. Then they won't be able to understand each other. In that way, the Lord scattered them all over the earth. And that ended the building of the city. That is why the city was called Babel, because it was there that the Lord confused the people by giving them many languages, thus scattering them across the earth. By giving each family or clan a different language, the Lord stopped their building project the people had no choice but to move away from Babel and fill the earth just as God had commanded. The people did not finish their tower, but God's plans were right on schedule. 